Hello everyone and welcome to the final round of the 2018 Build Chess Festival. Uh, like I've said yesterday, I'm uh, really looking forward to this game. It's Magnus Carlsen versus Nico Georgiadis uh, as they drew their game in the first half of the tournament. Now Carlsen has the white pieces. Uh, he can no longer win the tournament as Mamed Yarov already won it one whole round before the tournament ends. Uh, but, uh, you know, to, to keep, keep his rating and... Uh, to not be the only one who wasn't able to beat Nico in this tournament. Uh, it's very interesting what opening he will choose. So before we check out the game, we do have a nice photo challenge uh, before this game. So there you have it. Uh, who is the chess player in the photo? Uh, best of luck to everyone uh, playing uh, in the uh, Beal Open for Open tournament. And we do have a, a nice photo uh, of uh, Magnus and Nico before the game. So there you have it. There's the handshake. Uh, photo is taken by Simon Bohemblus. The, the photo is from the official Beal Chess Festival website. There will be a link in the description below if you want to check out some of the other photos as they are all quite uh, quite excellent so uh, let's uh, check out the game uh, Carlsen opens with e4 we have c5 the Sicilian defense by Nico and uh, now comes uh, I don't think uh, this move was ever played by a world champion but I could be wrong knight to a3 so definitely looking for adventure it's going to be a very interesting game and uh, as uh, Nico here is uh, I believe more than 300 rating points below uh, world champion Magnus Carlsen uh, he definitely does not want another draw uh, we have g6 uh, knight to f3, bishop to g7, and c3 now, preparing d4. Uh, uh, so Nico pushes d5, which is uh, the I ideal response, as there is a uh, pawn on c3. There is no longer a knight on b1, so, you know, it's uh, all, all makes sense. e captures on d5, queen captures on d5, uh, and now bishop to c4. Now the knight from a3 comes very useful. Uh, queen to e4 check, and now, while you can bring the bishop back, bishop to e2, you could block with the queen, go for an early queen exchange. Uh, Carlsen keeps everything on the board, he goes king to f1. Uh, we have bishop to e6, offering a queen trade, and here comes queen to a4 check. It really seems like uh, like Magnus is pushing, uh, pushing for more than there should be in this position. Uh, and here comes knight to d7. Uh, you should be careful, of course, bishop to d7, trying to kick away the queen would be met with bishop captures on f7, and uh, black would lose the game terribly here after king captures. You can even capture the queen immediately, or maybe go even knight g5 check, and then either capture with the knight or the queen, both is very nice, of course. Uh, so after queen to a4, a4 check, uh, knight to d7 blocking, and now d4. Uh, knight to f6, Nico simply develops, we have bishop to g5, and now comes the bishop to c4 with check. Uh, queen captures on c4, and now queen to d5, Nico offers a queen trade. Uh, rook to e1, uh, we have e6, and now comes the bishop captures on f6. Uh, uh, Nico played knight captures on f6, of course not. Bishop captures, then queen captures on d5 wins the game, as the pawn is spinned from the rook on e1. Uh, so, knight captures on f6, which is perfectly normal. Queen to b5 check, uh, now what do you do here, knight to d7 was played, and now knight to e5. Uh, a6, kicking the queen away, queen to c4, uh, Carlsen again offers a queen trade, uh, knight captures on e5, d captures on e5, and now rook to d8. Uh, Carlsen grabs the queen, queen captures on d5, rook captures on d5, and f4. So, uh, after all is said and done, it's uh, only move 19, but already... Uh, pretty much everything has been exchanged, and Carlsen has a knight on a3 against Nico's bishop on g7. As the bishop on g7 isn't really doing all that much, uh, since Carlsen has this very nice uh, central structure, uh, Nico immediately goes for it, which is a very nice move, g5. So temporarily giving up a pawn, but it will create a lot of weaknesses. Uh, so you could go for something like g3, not uh, allow you to double your pawns, but then captures, captures, and bishop to h6 uh, will make it very hard for... Uh, for white to actually defend it, if you even if you play something like rook to e4 to defend it, uh, rook to j is coming and uh, it will be very hard for for white to develop the rook on h1 and to to, to to play any moves in this position. So instead, after g5, Carlson decides to capture it. F captures on g5, uh, and now king to e7, preparing to bring the other rook into the game. Uh, here, h4 is played. Uh, you, uh, a very interesting variation is knight to c4 to try and add another defender of the e5 pawn and after b5, knight to b6, uh, attacking the rook, but not even knight to b6, better yet, knight to a5, defending the e5 pawn uh, indirectly. So now, of course, if you capture, then you get knight to c6 check, uh, black loses the game, uh, but it, it will all work out well for black after rook to c8, preventing knight to c6 check, and then whatever... Uh, 
uh, white plays, then only next move black will capture on e5. So Carlson doesn't bother guarding it. Uh, h4 is played. We have rook captures on e5, rook captures on e5, and now bishop captures on e5. Uh, king to e2, preparing to bring the other rook into the game, and now b5. Uh, knight to c2, Carlson has to activate his knight from a3. Rook to d8, and now knight to e1. Uh, c4, not allowing knight to d3, so knight to f3 is played, attacking the bishop. Uh, bishop back to g7, and now comes knight to d2. Uh, we have h6, uh, knight to e4, so a very nice central square for Carlsen's knight. Uh, also, it's a light square, so Nico will not be able to attack it with the bishop. Uh, h captures on g5, h captures on g5, and now rook to d5. Uh, the g5 pawn is, is kind of weak, it's a doubled pawn, so Nico would very much enjoy uh, capturing it, and perhaps it will, he will be able to attack it with the bishop. Uh, here, a3 is played uh, by Carlsen, uh, as a5 and b4 is, is to be expected from Nico. Uh, something like rook to h7 does seem very appealing, but uh, g, g6 will never actually become a threat. King to f8 will pretty much uh, stop all of Weiss' ideas with rook to h7. So instead, Carlsen simply prepares for Nico's expansion on the queen side. a3 is played. Uh, we have a5, and now rook to e1. Uh, bishop to e5. Uh, g3, not the not the you know easiest move to make as it does put your other doubled pawn on, on a dark square uh, while Nico has a dark square bishop, but you have to play something. And also now the king will try to infiltrate the position via king to f3 and the g4. King to f8 is played, king to f3, king to g7, king to g4, uh, and now king to g6. Uh, Nico uh, put uh, his king in front of uh, Carlsen's pawn on g5, and now he will try to attack it. Uh, some candidate moves are maybe bishop to c7 to d8, uh, sorry about that, bishop to c7 to d8, and from there the rook, the king, uh, and the bishop will be attacking the g5 pawn. So first Carlsen goes rook to f1, and now Nico goes for rook to d3, attacking Carlsen's g3 pawn. So now the knight can't really move, uh, but first Carlsen blocks the rook, rook to f3. Uh, we have rook to d1, Nico of course doesn't want to trade down, as there is a very weak pawn on b2 as well. Uh, Carlsen goes rook to e2, defending, rook to f2, defending the pawn, and now Nico brings the rook back, rook to d5. Uh, knight to d2 is played with some ideas of perhaps pushing a4, and uh, after an exchange capturing on c4, uh, but Nico immediately goes for bishop to c7. Now there is a double attack against the g5 pawn, and uh, you have to defend it. Knight to f3 is played, and now comes bishop to d8, uh, with a triple attack against Carlsen's g5 pawn. Uh, there is only one good move here, Carlsen plays it, knight to h4 check, kicking the king away from, from attacking the g5 pawn, King to g7 is played, and here Carlsen simply repeats knight to f3 to defend the pawn. And here is uh, the first moment in the game where if, if Nico wanted, he could have simply com continued with king to g6, and Carlsen wouldn't really have any other choice but to go for knight to h4 check, and uh, a threefold repetition would have been played, and a, a draw would have been agreed upon. Uh, but Nico wants to push for more. Bishop to b6, uh, attacking Carlsen's rook. Uh, rook to e2, and now comes bishop back to c7. Uh, Carlsen goes rook to e4, preparing uh, rook to d4, and here bishop to d6 is played. Uh, a better move would have been bishop to b6, not allowing Carlsen to go rook to d4, uh, but as Nico did allow it, Carlsen plays it, rook to d4. Rook captures, knight captures, attacking the b5 pawn, and now, well, as it is on a light square, there's no way to defend it, you have to push it. b4. Uh, and here Carlsen plays a4. Uh, creating a, a very critical position here, uh, where black could play so many moves, king to f8 is an idea, bishop to e5 is an idea, uh, even capturing on c3 after capturing, uh, then bishop to e3 not allowing this knight to move, uh, also an idea, black would have been perfectly fine in this position, uh, but instead after this a4 move, uh, Nico played b3, b3 is a uh, as Nico was not satisfied with a draw, he wanted uh, to create something here, he wanted a full point against world champion Magnus Carlsen, and it does seem like it's a very nice move. Uh, for example, if white plays something like king to f3, then you get bishop to a3 and you win this game, as there's no way for you to, to defend the b2 pawn. Uh, black will either capture here, then capture here, creating a, a much better position, a winning position. And of course, if you capture the bishop, then b2, then there, there's no way uh, of preventing the b2 pawn from queening. Uh, another nice idea uh, after this uh, b3 move uh, is if uh, Carlsen would, for example, play 
uh, something like knight to c6. Knight to c6 with an attack against the a5 pawn. Uh, then you would get bishop to a3 as planned, but now knight captures on a5. Bishop captures on b2, knight captures on c4, bishop captures on c3, and after knight to a3, Nico could push b2, and again, uh, black would be much better here, rather, black would be uh, in a winning position here. But... Uh, after Carlsen pushed a4 and Nico pushed b3, there is one move uh, Nico missed, uh, but Carlsen didn't miss it. Uh, Carlsen played it almost instantly uh, after after a long, long uh, time of playing this game. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find the move Nico missed, Carlsen played. And, uh, you know, uh, I will give it a couple of seconds for you to decide. It's a, it's a very nice idea, uh, but, you know, feel free, feel free to do it. Uh, so... There you have it. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. You have just played the only move that wins you the game. Any other ga any other move would lose you the game. Uh, the move Carlsen played is knight to f3. And here, Nico went into a long thing. I'm pretty sure it, just, it was like... Uh, it was like... Uh, 20 minute think. Uh, the last time I checked, he was thinking for 20 minutes. And then after... After <laughs> checking... All of the possibilities uh, there were, uh, then he simply decided that there is no more point in, in trying to play this game, as now he saw that the position was lost. Uh, he simply forgot how weak the c4 pawn here was, and there was no more point in continuing this game. Uh, for example... Uh, whatever he plays now, even if he tries uh, his old idea with bishop to a3, uh, which uh, seemed to be winning in every previous variation we've seen, uh, then it uh, doesn't work here, because now uh, b captures on a3 is actually possible. You simply capture it, and after pawn moves here, you get knight to d2, and now there is no more pushing the b-pawn, uh, knight will blockade this, and uh, it, it's all uh, good for white here. Uh, on the other hand, if you don't play bishop to a3, uh, there's really no good way for you to defend the c4 pawn. Whatever you play, knight to d2 is coming, capturing the c4 pawn. Uh, there is no good move for Nico here, and it's simply resignable on the spot. So yeah, a very nice game, and uh, you know, a very rare uh, opportunity for us to check out a game where a world chess champion will play, uh, let's check it out one more time, after e4 and c5, uh, he will play knight to a3 against the Sicilian. So yeah, uh, everything is playable, you know, if you want to have fun or if you, you know, just don't care anymore, which I'm sure uh, might have been the case, <laughs> it, it might be the case in this uh, game Carlsen played, uh, as I think after he lost that game yesterday against Shakhtar Mamedyarov, uh, that he was no longer interested in this, this tournament and that he thought that by creating some unusual position that his 300 plus rating, uh, you know, difference against Nico would be sufficient to actually win this game on the spot. Uh, but it's never easy when, you know, he is the world chess champion and, of course, Nico will be the most motivated when he plays against him. But yeah, that's the game. Uh, after this knight to f3 move, after some 20 minutes of, you know, sulking and uh, not believing what just happened, uh, Nico Georgiadis resigned the game. So, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I do hope uh, you've enjoyed the, the entire coverage of the Build Chess Festival 2018. Uh, so we're gonna just return to our Bobby Fischer series and check out what, what else we might do uh, while we're waiting for some bigger tournaments. And I did prepare uh, here, let's just check it out. These are the final standings of the 2018 Build Chess Festival after all the games have been played. Uh, in first place with an amazing, amazing result, uh, 7.5 out of 10, uh, Shakhrir Mamedyarov. Who, uh, he drew to gay against Peter Swidler, but I'm pretty sure as yesterday's, yesterday his rating performance was uh, somewhere around 2950. Uh, should be still ar uh, around 2,900 something. <clears throat> uh, in second place, Magnus Carlsen with six out of ten. Uh, Maxim Vashier with five out of five and a half out of ten. Peter Swidler five and a half out of ten. Uh, Navarro David with four out of ten. And uh, Nico Georgiadis who could have been two out of ten, but he wanted two and a half out of ten, so now he is one and a half out of ten. Uh, but he already drew against the world champion in the first half of the tournament, so now he wanted uh, to grab a full point and thus. Uh, he lost a full point. So yeah, uh, once again, I do hope you enjoyed it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, uh, and I will see you soon, continuing with the, the Bobby Fischer series. Thank you all, and I will see you soon.